Hi, welcome back. In this video, we will introduce the concept of quantum probability current, or charge current. We will derive an explicit mathematical form of the probability current from the current continuity equation, and subsequently, an expression of the current operator. We will conclude with some examples. Let's go gentle for the first three slides. First off, let's recall what is particle density. Consider a two-dimensional system, which we divide into units of elemental area of A. Each of the unit is located at coordinate given by the two-dimensional vector r. Then the particle density, n, at location, r, is just the number of particles in the unit area. In general, the particles at a given snapshot in time are also moving at some velocity. The current density, j, at, r, is the average velocity of the particles in the unit area multiplied by the number of particles. Since velocity is a vector, the current density is also a vector. For example, you can have many particles in a location, but if these particles have a zero average velocities, the current density at that location will be zero. Suppose the particles are charged, such as electrons. Then we can define charge density and charge current density just by multiplying the particle and current densities by the elementary electronic charge E. Here, we denote charge density with the symbol rho, but uses the same symbol J for charge current density. Now, in quantum mechanics, the particle density is being described by the probability density function. Thus we can replace N over A by the probability density function which is given by the modulus square of the wave function. The integrated probability density function over R will be the number of particles n. How about the quantum analogous expression for the current density? Loosely speaking, we know it should be a function of the wave function and some expectation value of the velocity. Let's proceed to work out the exact expression. Whenever we are dealing with particle flow, we unavoidably has to invoke the current continuity equation which is a fundamental statement of the conservation of particles. We shall illustrate this with a simple example in the one-dimensional flow as shown. Let's focus on keeping track of the particles in these colored pill boxes at coordinate x j minus 1, j and j plus 1. In this one-dimensional example, the particle density has a dimension of 1 over length, while the current density is 1 over time. Now, Let's focus on the particle density in pillbox J, denoted by NJ. The current density J sub J minus 1 describes the particle current that flow into the pillbox J, and the current density J sub J describe the particle current flowing out of pillbox J into J plus 1. If the particle inflow into the pillbox J does not balance the outflow, then the particle density in the pillbox J would have to change to account for the imbalance. We write down this particle conservation as follows, where the total change in the number of particles is given by the change in particle density in J multiplied by the length of the pillbox. This has to be balanced by the number of particle being injected and extracted out of the pillbox J, expressed in terms of their respective current densities multiplied by the small change in time delta T. I emphasize that what we are doing here is nothing but just particles conservation or bookkeeping the particles getting in and out of pillbox J. The equation in the yellow box is in fact known as the continuity equation, written in its differential elements form. To get it into its more familiar form, let's divide the equation by delta x and delta t. Then we obtain the more familiar continuity equation, stating that the rate of change of particle density has to balance the spatial gradient of the particle current. The more general form of the continuity equation in the 3D case can be obtained by replacing the differential gradient in J with the divergence of J as shown. The continuity equation that we derived applies similarly to charge particles. Let's state again our definition for charge density. The continuity equation governing the charge density with the charge current, defined here by J, is as shown. Starting from the left-hand side of the current continuity relation, we can write the rate of change of the charge density in terms of the wave function psi. We see here the appearance of the terms given by the time derivative of the wave functions as highlighted. In order to proceed, 
we recall the Schrödinger equation, which allows us to describe the rate of change of the wave functions in terms of the Hamiltonian multiplying by the wave function. The Hamiltonian contains the kinetic and potential energy terms as shown. The Schrödinger equation then allows us to replace the time differential of psi with psi as shown. The last term here reduced to zero due to the Hermitian property of the potential term. With some math, we can collect the terms and express it as a divergence of some quantity in the square bracket. Continuity equation requires this expression to be equal to the divergence of the current density. Making the comparison between them then allows us to write down an expression for the current density as highlighted in blue. Since the two terms in the square bracket are complex conjugate counterparts, it allows us to just express it in terms of its imaginary part as shown. Next, we asked if it is possible to obtain an explicit expression for the current operator. We begin by writing the various terms in its Dirac notations. Next, we recall the definition of the momentum operator in the position representation as shown in the gray box. The expression for the current density operator can then be given as follows in the blue box. Let's conclude this discussion with some explicit examples. Consider traveling waves with forward and backward propagating waves with amplitudes A and B. It should be rather straightforward to work out its spatial derivative and complex conjugate as shown. We can work out an expression for the current density using the formula we derived earlier. Since the last two terms collectively is real, the current density then reduces to the electronic charge E times the phase velocity and times the difference in the modulus square of A and B. Last example, let's look at an evanescent wave. We can find such evanescent wave within a tunneling barrier. The real wave vector kappa describe the evanescent spatial decay length. It should be rather straightforward to work out its spatial derivative and complex conjugate as shown. With some algebra, we can show that the current density is proportional to kappa, and the product of the amplitudes A and B. This shows that tunneling current is only possible if both A and B are finite. This only occurs for a sufficiently thin tunneling barrier. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.